brick and mortar retailers are struggling bad out here. And some of them have filed for bankruptcy twice. And they are blaming Amazon. You know, at this point, I really believe a lot of these locations need to shut down. You know, it's okay to have a handful of them out here, but I think what happened in America, they went overboard duplicating these stores over and over and over in too many locations. So this came out February 2nd, 2020. CNBC, more retailers file for bankruptcy twice as they struggle with rising debt pressure from Amazon. You know, shopping from home is just a real popular thing. You know, you don't have to burn your gas. You don't have to physically be in the store. And for many of us in the black community, you don't have to worry about somebody calling the cops on you over a bunch of nothing because they spotted you while you were out. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, things have changed dramatically. You know, you really can't be shopping from home, especially in places like Amazon, where, you know, you spend a certain amount, you can get your items delivered free of charge, or if you're a Prime member, you can get free shipping. So, ladies and gentlemen, these brick and mortar locations, many of them are in trouble now. Last month, many New York City residents woke to surprising news that could change their shopping routines as well as the items in their refrigerator. The local grocery chain Fairway, known for its no frills atmosphere and extensive selection of items like cheese and seafood, had filed for bankruptcy not just for the first time, but for the second. It's a scenario that's getting more common for traditional retailers as they find themselves under pressure from a sea change in where and how people are shopping. Retailers like Barney's and Radio Shack have found themselves on the brink twice, going through a bankruptcy once emerging and then heading back to court again in cases where the company files specifically for Chapter 11 twice, the scenario is referred to as Chapter 22. We deal with the sick industry. The retail has been a sick industry for a while, said Stephen Selbis, chair of the Reconstructing and Bankruptcy Group at New York law firm Herrick Feinstein. Hmm. Overall, the number of retail bankruptcies is rising. There were 22 retail bankruptcies in 2019 compared with 17 in 2018, according to a tracking by CB Insights. The firm has tracked over 80 retail bankruptcies dating back to 2015. Part of the problem is that it is only becoming more difficult to remain relevant as a retailer in an age where Amazon is dominating more categories online as consumers shop for their couches instead of in stores. Many two-time bankruptcy offenders are names that relied on, you know, too heavily on foot traffic in malls like teen retailer Wet Seal and shoe store chain Payless, which is completely gone now. For such companies, filing for bankruptcy is a lever pull to break leases on stores where they have too much real estate and need to close some shops. And then there are those that have other specific underlying problems in the business. Fairway, for instance, took on too much debt and expanded too fast. For retailers, getting shoppers back in stores post-bankruptcy can be a challenging proposition. Retail is a tough business. Selvis went on. If you lose the connection with shoppers, it is really hard to get them back. Here are some of the retail chains that have been through bankruptcy twice. 
either filing a chapter 11 protective twice or filing for chapter 11 once and later filing for chapter seven liquidation, fairway market. All right, so they did uh, chapter 11 in 2016, roughly three years after its IPO, after reaching a deal with lenders to slash about $140 million in debt. Wow, that's a lot of debt. The company faced heightened competition from the likes of Trader Joe and Amazon Whole Food. Fairway has also grown too large too quickly, and it failed to boost sales enough to pay down debt. This time in bankruptcy court, Fairway only closed one of its stores. It's emerged just a little more than two months ago, uh, two months later in July 2016. So, wow. So they had to do two Chapter 11s. This time, the company has entered into a stalking horse agreement with ShopRite owner and the operator Village Supermarket for up to five of its stores and a distribution center for $70 million. And Fairway says it will look for buyers for its other locations, which are in the New York area. Payless filed first uh, chapter 11 in 28, I'm sorry, 2017, April, with more than 4,000 stores in more than 30 countries following a leverage buyout in 2012 by private equity firms Blum Capital and Golden Gate. Payless still struggled with a heavy debt load of $847 million admin poor sales. And see, this is what I keep telling y'all. These folks are not good in business. Now, I know they like to perpetrate this thing about we don't know how to run business, despite the fact that we got a history of running businesses quite well. <laughs> okay, Black Wall Street, you know, all those towns that white mobs burned down, those businesses were doing quite well. And these same people want us to believe they are the best in business. And look at the debt that they bear. $847 million. That's a lot of damn debt. And then you saw the supermarket before this one. This is ridiculous. But see, all you got to do is pick up a Wall Street Journal every now and then and read through it. These companies lose so much money. It's not even funny. And the thing is, they got it so rigged up in America, they can lose this amount of money and still go out and get a loan real easy. <laughs> That's how they got it rigged up. This time in bankruptcy court, Payless elim eliminated nearly 700 stores and roughly $435 million in debt. It emerged in August 2017. In February 2019, Payless filed for bankruptcy a second time. And this time the company said it was going to begin winding down all of its more than 2,500 U.S. stores. And I know the ones around me are gone. The 2019 filing said Payless had about $470 million in outstanding debt. Now, ladies and gentlemen... Again, does this sound like somebody knows how to run businesses? That's the whole point I'm trying to make to you. These folks don't know how to run businesses. They just like to give the illusion that they know how to run things. But when you take a closer look, you'll realize they don't know how to run nothing. It's the truth. Okay, so the retailer had been seeking a buyer for some of its real estate, hoping to keep some stores up and running, but no deals were struck. Payless last month said it had emerged from bankruptcy again with a renewed focus on its international operations and with plans to grow in the U.S. It doesn't have any stores open in America currently, but has more than 710 stores, including those with franchises 
in more than 30 other countries. It also has new management, a new management team in place. Barney's in New York. So uh, Barney's first filed for bankruptcy more than two decades ago in 1996 after a squabble with its Japanese owner. Department store company is Siten. Uh, the filing was in part a move to renegotiate its deal with Isitan as well as cope with what is viewed as excessive rent. Barney then narrowly avoided another trip to bankruptcy in 2012, said Perry Capital, a hedge fund run by New York financier uh, Richard Perry, who took control over the company through a $540 million debt for equity swap. But Barney's New York found itself back in bankruptcy court in August of last year in trouble with high-end department store operator in an increasingly crowded space where uh, were only made worse by sky-high rent payments amid slumping sales. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. Jimboree, which we know closed a lot of its location, so they also filed for bankruptcy in 2017 and then again in 2019. Charming Charlie filed a Chapter 11 in 2017, and then they did it again in 2019. So Radio Shack did a Chapter 11 in 2015. And they filed again in 2017. So, so much for, we know what we're doing. <laughs> uh, Wet Seal, another one, filed Chapter 11, Bankruptcy Protection in 2015. And they had to close stores in 2017. They had refiled again. American Apparel, same thing, filed bankruptcy October 2015. And... They had to go back to bankruptcy court in 2016 to file again. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, these retailers are struggling bad. They are no match for online shopping. And that's really the bottom line. And the folks don't want to be bothered with going in these stores anymore. Not like they used to, especially if they can save their money and time and shop online. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.